This has been sitting outside and kind of decaying and aging and getting that patina that Detroit is so known for. Yeah, I designed this piece originally. It was for uh, the show that was called America Here and Now. And I was asked to design this piece that described what I thought about the city of Detroit. And I decided to go for the industry itself, like the, what built the city from lumber to automotive, you know, what's happening in the city and what is possible change. And well, for me, you know, it's alternative energy, it's green power, it's something new and important. Hi, my name is Anthony Reale, and um, I've been a artist, engineer, designer, uh, basically since I was born. It's been in my blood, and I'm a maker, and I'm a maker here in the city of Detroit. So we're here in Wyandotte, Michigan, and this is downriver. So this is downriver from the great city of Detroit. Uh, this is where all the steel mills and all the fabrications and everything kind of went from the Detroit industry. And uh, this is the Detroit River. Over here we have a beautiful coal-fired uh, plant that powers the city of Wyandotte. You know, this is, this is the motor right here. It hasn't stopped flowing since we've been here. And it produces about a 2 mile an hour, 2.5 mile an hour current. And you're like, well, that's not a lot, except that water has 60 times the potential energy that air does. So 60 times two, that's 120 mile an hour. If I said I had 120 mile an hour wind blowing past my city, you'd be like, why aren't you guys on wind power? I designed straight power, which is a hydrokinetic turbine. Basically, it's an underwater windmill. It makes electricity. Uh, it's based off of a basking shark which is a filter feeding shark, and it improves the efficiency of a turbine blade by 40%. I was watching TV, and uh, there was something on about the basking shark, which is this filter, filter feeder. It's a giant 22 foot long monster that just kind of swims along, and it just eats plankton. And I'm looking at it, and I'm watching it swim, and it's got its mouth open. And I'm like, this thing, it's, it's like fighting itself, but pushing forward with its mouth open. There's got to be something about this. And then I'm like, I can make a, a hydrokinetic turbine out of this thing. And I took this little sketch and then I turned it into a 900 pound model made out of 4,800 uh, individual pieces of wood that were sculpted with a chainsaw and then cut on a mill and glued and doweled together. Uh, built a transmission out of some go-kart parts, uh, put some fans together out of a uh, truck, out of a big diesel truck. Uh, the cooling fans, and I made it and took it to U of M. Uh, and I worked with the University of Michigan's hydrodynamics laboratory. And so my shark-inspired cowling system improved the efficiency of the blades comparatively by 40%, which was like a big deal. Like now we're getting 40% more energy than we would have if we didn't have the cowling system. And this isn't something just for Detroit. I mean, the world is full of moving water. It doesn't have to be a river, it can be a tidal system. So putting these small things in like creeks and stuff would be really interesting. Um, but again, you know, maybe we need to, if we're going to do a creek in a low level bay, maybe we need to step away from this basking shark. Maybe we need to look at the manta ray. Maybe we need to look at the cuttlefish and see how it swims and propels itself to change that. You know, I, whenever I'm designing, I always tell myself, if my answer is more than five feet away from me, I am not looking hard enough. You know, there is just enough inspiration everywhere to find something that'll take you to that next yeah. step. And being that I'm from the downriver area and we're surrounded by these big empty like steel mills and stuff down by our water, uh, there's the this, this sense of construct that's always there and it's half built and half falling apart and it was once the driving factor and now it's just... that would be filled with you know, molten steel and just pour out. And the volume and the amount of, of stuff that would be coming out of these factories, I mean, this is where all the metal for you know, the big three came from. You know, all the way up and down this river is just iron factories and they're, they're closed. Um, most of them either went to China and then you know, Germany did a good job making some steel. And there's talks of bringing some back, but there's always talks. <laughs> we just have to make more things. <laughs> I always asked myself, like, what, what would it take to bring this back? That's kind of the other thing about being a maker or designer. It's like, 
I could go get a job or I could make things that make jobs and help out the people around me.